Last week, Boeing's Director of Business Development, a former F-15 pilot named Robert Blender Novotny, made headlines around the world when he claimed the new F-15EX could achieve speeds as high as Mach 2.9. That claim didn't last long, however, and just about 48 hours after the initial story went live with Aviation Week, Novotny took to LinkedIn to retract his claim, saying he was mistaken and the F-15EX's actual top speed is more like Mach 2.497, just a bit shy of the F-15C it's meant to replace. Now, some have questioned this retraction, pointing to the fact that the F-15EX is quite a bit more powerful than the F-15C, and pointing to the fact that Novotny, a former F-15 pilot himself, shouldn't have been hundreds of miles per hour off when disclosing the aircraft's maximum speed to an aviation journalist like Steve Trimble. But the truth is, no matter what you think of Novotny's claim or his subsequent retraction, the top speed of the Eagle II is far from what makes this aircraft so capable. So let's talk about the F-15EX and why it is arguably the most capable fourth generation fighter ever to fly, regardless of its top speed. I'm Alex Hollings, and this is Air Power. Before we dive in, let's take a minute to talk about today's sponsor, Ground News. When people talk about bias in media, they usually talk about dishonest reporting. But the truth is, the most pervasive kinds of bias in most media today comes in the form of semantic framing. Now, semantic framing is the use of intentional word choices to shape perceptions of a story. And Ground News makes it very easy to spot this sort of trickery. Ground News is an aggregator that collects news stories from outlets all around the world and then places them into an easy to follow feed that makes it really simple to see the differences in coverage depending on an outlet's political bias. Remember our discussion about Russia's efforts to field an orbital nuke? Well, here on Ground News, we can see that 212 news outlets have already covered the story, including 44 left-leaning outlets, 27 right-leaning outlets, and 88 centrist outlets. But what's particularly interesting to me is the differences in semantic framing you can see in the headlines between left and right-leaning outlets. Left-leaning outlets repeatedly used words like troubling in their headlines to emphasize the implications of this announcement, whereas right-leaning outlets used terms like disturbing or sparks chaos to emphasize reactions to the announcement over implications. Neither side's headlines were dishonest, but they're certainly framed differently thanks to very specific word choices. And Ground News makes it very easy to identify these kinds of tough-to-spot biases by putting these stories right next to one another. Ground Ground News is an invaluable part of my research toolbox, and it can be in yours too. Make sure to go to ground.news slash sandbox to get 40% off unlimited access to the same vantage plan that I use in my research. Subscribing not only supports my channel, but it supports the work of the folks at Ground News who are working hard to hold media accountable. I know I find Ground News to be useful, and I think you will too. You may not be able to teach an old dog new tricks, but you can definitely teach an eagle. Boeing's F-15EX Eagle II is continuing to redefine the capabilities and performance we've come to expect of advanced fourth generation fighters. The F-15 Eagle is America's fastest in-service fighter with a disclosed top speed of Mach 2.5. And in a recent video, we discussed how the F-15 EX Eagle II's advanced new fly-by-wire control systems make this aircraft dramatically more maneuverable than previous iterations of the Eagle. But we didn't spend much time talking about its new engines. The original F-15 is powered by a pair of Pratt & Whitney F-100 PW220 afterburning turbofan engines, which each produce an impressive 23,770 pounds of thrust under afterburner. But the new F-15EX swaps those power plans out for a pair of GE F-110 229s. Now, these engines each produce around 29,500 pounds of thrust under afterburner, giving the Eagle II about 11,460 more pounds of thrust than the original Eagle. Now, that's the equivalent added thrust of adding a third turbofan engine, giving the F-15EX a mind-boggling maximum thrust of 59,000 pounds. 
All that added power did seem to lend some credence to Novotny's claims that the F-15EX can achieve Mach 2.9, despite the fact that the twin-seat F-15EX is about 6,000 pounds heavier than the single-seat F-15C. But the truth is, even if it were true, this doesn't really matter. No tactical aircraft ever achieves their maximum speed in combat. In fact, it would be pretty much impossible to do while carrying a standard combat load. Maximum speed ratings in fighter aircraft like the F-15 and really all others are always calculated using a naked aircraft. In other words, carrying no external munitions or ordnance or usually even pylons. The F-16, for instance, has a rated top speed of Mach 2. But if you were to ask my buddy Hazard Lee, who's now an F-35 pilot for the Air Force, he'd be the first to tell you that the few times he did bring his stripped-down F-16 all the way up to that top speed, it was a short and very stressful trip. At full afterburner, you could deplete all the fuel on board your aircraft in just a matter of minutes, and the F-15EX is no exception. The F-15EX is the third iteration of what's known as the Advanced Eagle family, which started back in 2013 with Saudi Arabia's F-15SA, and continued to see improvements with Qatar's F-15QA. Today's F-15EX Eagle II benefits from billions of dollars of improvements incorporated into those previous aircraft purchased by foreign partners. And as a result of those improvements and additional ones added for the EX, this aircraft is, hands down, the most potent iteration of the Eagle ever to fly. And seeing as the F-15Cs and Ds that served as the basis for this aircraft already boast an air combat record of 104 wins and zero losses, that means the Eagle II is likely the most capable and competent dogfighter ever to fly, and that includes its fifth generation competitors. Now that is thanks to its incredibly powerful engines, its fly-by-wire controls, and its very low wing loading. Now wing loading is the ratio of overall wing area to aircraft weight, and the lower that ratio is, the more maneuverable your aircraft tends to be. In fact, it was a combination of power and low wing loading that made the original F-15 such a terror for adversaries in the sky. But the original Eagle started flying before fly-by-wire became the standard. In fact, the first fighter to be fielded with fly-by-wire controls was the F-16 that entered service just a few years after the F-15. And as a result, the Eagle's Uncle Sam has in service today don't use fly-by-wire, but rather a more conventional hybrid electrical mechanical system. During Boeing's development of the Eagle II, they not only incorporated an advanced new fly-by-wire computer control system, but also internal structural changes to the wings and fuselage that make the aircraft significantly stronger. As a result, the Eagle II's computers allow it to perform extreme maneuvers that Boeing's test pilots say could normally only be done by an aircraft with thrust vector control, like the F-22 or the Su-35, aircraft that can orient the outflow of their engine's thrust independent of the fighter itself. Now, the F-15 doesn't have those, but thanks to its advanced computers, it can emulate the performance of an aircraft that does. And thanks to those structural improvements, this aircraft has a standard G-load limit of 9 Gs, like most modern fighters today, but can actually go as high as 12 Gs in an emergency. Now, that's not just 12 times the force of gravity, but if you recall watching Top Gun Maverick, that is significantly more G-forces than we saw literally bending the fuselage of those Super Hornets, which, while not real, was fairly realistic. But the benefits of that fly-by-wire computer and new structural changes don't stop there. The added stability provided by these changes allowed Boeing to add two additional weapon stations outboard on the wings, which combined with the AMBER, or Advanced Missile and Bomb Ejector Rack, allowed the F-15EX to increase its payload capacity by about 30% over the F-15E Strike Eagle, allowing it to carry nearly 30,000 pounds of ordnance, which can be split up a number of different ways, including carrying as many as 22 air-to-air -air missiles that would include 12 AIM-120 AMRAMs, or Advanced Medium-Range Air-to-Air Missiles, and another 10 
AIM 9X Sidewinders. But the Eagle II is not strictly an air superiority fighter like the original Eagle. In fact, it retains all the air to ground capabilities delivered by the F 15E Strike Eagle as well. And in air to ground operations, the Eagle II could carry 16 GBU 39 small diameter bombs four AMRAMs or advanced medium range air to air missiles, another 2000 pound JDAM, another two AGM 88 harms, and two extra drop tanks for added range. This thing is an absolute weapon truck. And again, thanks to that fly by wire control system, the Eagle II can manage asymmetric loads better than any F 15 before. And that's important if, say, the aircraft is flying into the fight carrying two large hypersonic missiles under wing. After it launches one weapon, it may be carrying the other for a while. The computer can automatically offset for that asymmetric load to make the control response the same as it would be if flying with a symmetrical load. And before I move on from talking about what a big deal these fly-by-wire and structural changes are, you should also know that those structural changes increase this aircraft's operational lifespan to an absolutely astonishing 20,000 hours. Now, the Air Force's current fleet of F-15Cs and Ds only average about 120 flight hours per year, which means at that rate, the F-15EX could fly for, say, 165 years before it would need significant structural repairs. But it's important to remember that if the U.S. were to find itself in a large-scale or high-intensity conflict, those hour numbers would start ticking up very quickly, making that extended operational lifespan super valuable to the U.S. But no matter how good a dogfighter the Eagle II is, these days, dogfights are really considered to be a thing of the past. And the truth is, as good as the Eagle II is in close quarters, it may be even better and beyond visual range engagements. The original F-15 was a powerhouse, but its original radar and AIM-7 Sparrow missiles made it not quite as effective at beyond visual range engagements as the F-14 Tomcat the Navy operated. But today's Eagle II would tell both the Eagle and the Tomcat to put their pajamas on and go to bed. It's got BVR covered. Not only does it carry the ANAPG 82V1 active electronically scanned array radar, among the most powerful and capable radars ever affixed to a fighter, but it also carries the Lockheed Martin Legion IRST pod. Now that pod carries the IRST-21 infrared search and track sensor, which can detect and target enemy aircraft via their heat signature alone. Now this passive system's maximum detection and targeting ranges have not been disclosed, but the general consensus among external analysts is that it may be able to detect enemy fighters at triple digit ranges and can likely even target stealth fighters from head on from as far out as more than 30 miles, making this infrared search and track system a beyond visual range capability. But the benefits of the Legion pod don't end there. This passive system is not susceptible to electronic warfare and can even communicate with other Legion pods in the area via an encrypted data link, allowing aircraft carrying these pods to exchange environment and target data for even more situational awareness and even more complex targeting opportunities. And when you combine that with the aircraft's helmet-cued targeting and the high off bore sight targeting capabilities of weapons like the AIM-9X, that means the Eagle II may be the best dogfighter in the world, but doesn't have to be, because it can let its missiles do the hard maneuvering for it. In fact, the back seater in the Eagle II could target an enemy aircraft off to their right, left, or even behind them just by looking at them, and then engage them with that AIM-9X. Now that you've heard all that, you could be forgiven for thinking that the Eagle II is just a heavily armed hot rod, but the truth is, it's also among the most technologically advanced fighters on the planet today, and that is in no small part thanks to the ADCP-2 onboard mission computer. Now, ADCP-2 stands for Advanced Display Core Processor 2, and according to Honeywell, the firm responsible for its production, it's capable of processing more than 87 billion instructions per second. Now, all that added computing power gives Eagle 2 drivers a massive amount of situational awareness, delivered via a new all-glass cockpit that itself is an evolution of the cockpit originally proposed for the Silent Eagle Stealth F-15 proposal from the early 2000s, while also enabling the integration of that ANAPG-82 active electronically scanned array radar and the new 
EPAWS system, or Eagle Passive Active Warning Survivability System. Now, EPAWS is a new electronic warfare suite that actually replaces three previous electronic warfare capabilities carried by older Eagles. Not only is it an all-aspect radar warning receiver with full 360-degree coverage and geolocation capabilities, but it also allows for electronic warfare and jamming of adversary systems. Now, what that means is as the Eagle II flies through contested airspace, the EPAWS system is constantly scanning the area, identifying the radar frequencies being broadcast at it by enemy targeting arrays. As soon as it identifies those radar broadcasts, it not only notifies the pilot that they are at risk of being locked onto, but it shows them precisely where that threat is coming from, allowing the pilot to take corrective action to get themselves outside the threat envelope of that system. Not only that, but the EPAW system can jam those enemy radar arrays to allow the F-15 to fly through contested airspace without being shot down by surface-to-air missile systems. And in the event somebody does manage to pierce that electronic warfare shroud, EPAWS also has a completely integrated AN-ALE-47 countermeasure suite that can deploy flares or chaff or even other jamming systems to make sure that none of those weapons make it through all the way to the aircraft. And if all of that wasn't enough, you should know that the Eagle II is a two-seater aircraft designed to be flown with just one person on board. You could throw a single pilot into the Eagle II, and they can control all of the mission systems required to complete air-to-air -air or air-to-ground operations. But you could also throw a second crew member into that second fully mission-capable seat, allowing you to distribute the cognitive load of advanced and complex combat operations, or to manage even more advanced systems still emerging, like, say, managing a team of AI-enabled drones flying as wingmen. And in fact, the Eagle II's avionics were all designed with open system architecture, making it capable of absorbing or adapting to advanced new technologies that haven't even emerged yet, all without needing to go through any specific contractors. In other words, this aircraft is very much plug and play, so whenever Uncle Sam comes up with a new hypersonic missile, or a new infrared search and track sensor, a new jammer pod, or anything else, they can all be quickly integrated into the Eagle II for a low cost as opposed to the incredibly expensive and lengthy updates we're seeing to platforms today like the F-22 Raptor, which, despite its advanced technologies, just wasn't designed to be easy to upgrade. In fact, Lieutenant General Michael Lowe, the director of the U.S. Air National Guard, cited this open architecture capability specifically when he said the Air Guard should buy more F-15 EXs. As he explained, that open system architecture combined with the Eagle II's onboard fiber optic connections between the separate mission computer and operational flight program computer are all so versatile that they could replace the entire operating system on board with whatever they want, and they can add new capabilities to this aircraft in a matter of hours. You see, in most previous fighters, that operational flight program computer and the mission computer were usually one and the same, and as a result, adding new mission systems or capabilities required changes to the operational flight program computer itself. And what that usually means is adding any new systems or capabilities requires the entire aircraft to go back through a rigorous testing regimen to make sure that those changes didn't have any unintended consequences in other aspects of the aircraft. But by separating these computers, you make it very easy to add new capabilities without compromising any of the aircraft's basic functions. But the other thing the Air Guard boss really liked about the Eagle II is its ability to carry oversized weapons. Today, stealth fighters need to be able to carry their munitions internally to maintain their stealth profile, and as a result, these aircraft are very limited in the size of the munitions they can carry. But because the Eagle II carries its munitions externally, it can carry some very large weapons, including the JASM ER, which is a low-observable long-range cruise missile, and potentially even the AGM-183 Arrow, or Air-Launched Rapid Response Weapon, a hypersonic glide vehicle the U.S. Air Force 
previously canceled, but now appears to be reconsidering putting into service. Now, weapons like the Jasmine ER and Arrow are standoff munitions with ranges of 600 or 1,000 miles, and as a result, that would allow the Eagle II to deploy these weapons from well outside the reach of enemy air defenses. And because the Eagle II can network directly with other advanced aircraft, it can also serve as a missile truck for stealth fighters like the F-35, flying out ahead, identifying targets, and relaying that target data back to the Eagle II. Now, today's Eagle II can already engage enemy aircraft at low triple-digit ranges thanks to the most advanced iteration of the AIM-120 D3 AMRAAM. But those ranges will get a whole lot longer once the AMRAAM's replacement, the AIM-260, comes online. Now, the AIM-260's maximum range has not been disclosed, but it's understood to be well north of 100 miles, and it may even outreach even the Eagle II's onboard radar, at which point it would be a very effective weapon to leverage using F-35s to identify targets and Eagle II's flying maybe 50 miles back, engaging them from long range. Now, in this era of stealth fifth-generation fighters, the Eagle II program has plenty of critics, and to be fair, the F-15 does have an absolutely massive radar cross-section, estimated by some to be as big as 25 square meters, thanks to the 90-degree angle between its horizontal tail surfaces and its absolutely massive standing vertical tails. But the truth is, in today's day and age, there are still lots of jobs out there that don't require stealth or the immense expense associated with operating stealth aircraft. Today's Eagle IIs are being purchased as direct replacements for America's aging F-15Cs and Ds in the homeland defense role. In other words, these aircraft are tasked with defending American territory, and as such, they don't need to be sneaky. They're out on a patrol and they want to be seen. They could also be extremely effective at enforcing no-fly zones, where the Eagle II has the payload capacity to carry air-to-ground and air-to-air -air munitions for patrols where, again, you want your presence to be known. But as I already mentioned, in a near-peer fight, the Eagle II could also be an extremely potent missile truck, carrying ordnance that could be effectively leveraged by the F-35's even more advanced and capable onboard sensors. The F-22 Raptor's combination of stealth, performance, and advanced avionics may make it the reigning king of the skies, and the F-35's incredible sensor-fusing onboard computers may make it the most broadly capable fighter in the world today. But when it comes to enforcing your geopolitical will over contested airspace, there are few aircraft on the planet that could even hold a candle to the F-15 EX Eagle II.